Friends. Welcome. We're back at Vivid Buffalo Studios. My name is Angela Miklas, and I'm an owner of Vivid Buffalo. So we will be tonight reading an excerpt from um, Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie. Before we get to that, so Vivid Buffalo had a paint night tonight, a virtual paint night. Um, tonight was a watercolor class. So for any of the virtual classes, we have one more um, of those coming up. You can check out the Vid Buffalo Eventbrite and buy the tickets there. Um, we'll deliver those kits over to you locally um, in addition to any other local retail that we have too. So we can deliver that right to your door. Um, so we had our paint night tonight that went really great. Um, we've got more paint nights booked at Riverworks and um, currently working with um, a few teachers. So we're going to be adding to that group and continuing um, classes at Riverworks. Um, so as we um, grow the class list and the teacher list, if that sounds like something that you would be interested in. So if you're an art teacher, um, and we led a variety of different types of classes, multimedia classes, watercolor, acrylics, um, we're open to any ideas and we have the space to do it. Um, Riverworks is one, but there's definitely a lot of options, even virtual. So if teaching is something um, you have an interest in, you can reach out to me, Angela, at vividbuffalo.com. Send me you know, your resume, or if you have a portfolio, send that along, um, and we can get you hooked up with classes. So um, definitely from a teacher perspective, reach out, and from a student perspective, um, come out to the classes at Riverworks, or you know, join us for the virtual um, paint nights. Um, virtual paint nights are really great too. If you want to get together um, with a group, um, we do private parties. So um, one of the big events that we did um, last year during the pandemic was Mother's Day and everybody was able to get together virtually and paint together. So that was really cool. Um, but, you know, birthday parties or just friends gathering together on a Friday night, want to do a private party together, um, we can absolutely organize those things for you as well. So feel free to reach out. Um, we have a lot of fun with those art classes, that's for sure. And yoga classes. So yoga brunch tickets are selling. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to teach at Riverworks again, you guys. Um, I love teaching yoga. It's something that um, yoga is a practice that I love very much, but it's also um, not only something I love to practice, I love to share. It's um, been instrumental in my life. And um, my yoga teacher certification came from Yogis in Service, um, which is an amazing organization in the Buffalo, New York area that offers and provides yoga classes where typically people do not have access to yoga. So um, they teach in jails, they teach, um, you know, in, um, they teach at the VA hospital, inner city locations. Um, they bring yoga everywhere. Right now, um, they're even teaching virtual classes. Um, and they're you know, offering the teacher trainings as well. So I think they have a teacher training going on right now, um, but they'll have future trainings and continuing education. And Yogis and Service is just a great organization to donate to. Um, so I was trained through this wonderful organization that um, embraces um, Yogis in service embodies the practice of yoga at its core and all of its values. And I couldn't imagine getting a teacher training anywhere else. 
And then I practice at Power Yoga Buffalo, which is a Baptiste inspired vinyasa flow, which is a pretty challenging practice. So what I like to do is make that type of challenging practice accessible to people. And that's what the yogis in service training was all about, creating access for yoga. So really breaking it down, making it accessible, um, making it something that you can embody in yourself. Because as long as you have a body and a breath, you can do yoga. And so if you come and you sit on your mat and you ground and you breathe, and you move in a way that inspires you, and then you go eat brunch afterwards, like, what a great day. So I'll give you access to that. Check out Vivid Buffalo Eventbrite. You and your friends, come out, do some yoga, have some brunch, and spend some time at Buffalo River Works. So, that's a lot of things. Um, and again, I know a lot of, companies that are growing um, and developing in the Buffalo area and looking for really amazing employees, um, office assistants, if you have accounting skills, call center skills. I'm even looking for people that have handyman skills or um, have run events, uh, roadies. I'm also looking for people with IT skills. If any of those things sound like, geez, um, you know, I'm looking for a career and that sounds like my vertical, my experience, something that I would like to do, you can send your resume to Angela at vividbuffalo.com and I could point you in the right direction. Um, I know of a lot of good opportunities. Um, I would be happy to direct you. Um, so all of that being said, let's hit it up. Journey to the Heart by Melody Beatty, one of my favorites. Um, today's reading, I browsed, it looks super heavy, um, but important because it's about learning to heal ourselves. So let's get there. Learn to help heal yourself. I feel a heaviness in my lungs, almost a pain the next day. I find myself crying, discharging old grief and sadness. On another occasion, I feel sharp pangs in my stomach. Within days, denied rage begins to surface and the pain, the pain subsides. My head aches, pounds, throbs. Hours later, I feel the fear that I've been running from. I feel the energy in my body shifting, moving, taking new shape. Over the next months, I'm led to a new cycle, a new season in my life. Some of the pains and illnesses we suffer are indications of acute physical problems. They're signs that our body has broken down and we need medical attention. But many of the aches and pains we experience are symptoms of a deeper process, a process of healing and cleansing our heart and soul. As we go through our daily experiences, circumstances will trigger this healing. Someone says something that makes us feel angry or afraid, which triggers that feeling similar to the one we repressed years ago or a conversation causes us to remember something that hurt us long ago, and our body begins to release the pain of that old emotion. Sometimes our aches and pains are signals that some emotion is ready to surface. We need to acknowledge the feeling, feel the energy, let it pass through us, 
then watch for the lesson to appear and the pain to dissipate. If we are committed to the path of spiritual growth, our bodies will soon begin to use everything that happens as a vehicle for healing. Trust yourself and listen, and you'll know what to do. You'll find healers and help that will support you as you continue to discover and trust your soul. Remember to trust the simple everyday wisdom of your body. It's a barometer for your soul. I come from a family that It's encouraged to repress those emotions and there's strength in not showing how you feel. Um, I think that's a common thing. I don't think that's particular to like my family, but being raised that way, it, there's a dissociation that happens when those feelings come up and then you shut them down right away. And the problem is then they build and they build and they come out sideways and you can attack someone you love, you know, verbally or just explode in anger. Um, when those feelings come up, Notice them because it gives the opportunity to practice. I've learned to be curious about them, to want to understand why the feeling's coming up rather than get caught in the moment and the feeling of rightness. Now that being said, that's, that's super hard, but it's a practice. It's something to work on, you know, every single day, all of the feelings that come up. It's one of the reasons why I love my physical yoga practice. Sometimes when really big things happen to me, just given the nature of some of the things I've been through in my life and some serious trauma, like car accident, things like that, um, you know, it's a strange ability to dissociate. So when big, super big things happen or Last year, you know, a big um, person in my life passed away and just like zzz, no feelings. And, you know, it's almost like one of those things that it's weird. Like, I know this isn't, <laughs> I know I should be feeling, <laughs> I know I should be sad. And those, and you are, you know, some of it came up a little bit, but it just wasn't, I knew there was more to it. And then, um, through like physical practice um, and those sensations that come up in the yoga practice really allow access to some of those emotions and you know it's not necessary, necessarily even an emotion that's labeled um, it's just a, a sensation that comes up and because I'm involved in a physical practice it's like an opportunity to feel it and breathe through it and continue the practice. So it was a way to cope and have the feelings come up and the feelings are still really intense and like yoga is a place that I can cry a lot easier, you know, and I think it's easier for me to cry now and release emotion now, um, but it's just, again, a practice. like actually experiencing those feelings as they come up rather than repressing it. So you're not making it such a big deal. Like you just get a chance to notice and say, I am not that, but I can observe that and I can be curious about that. And when anger shows up, 
I don't have to react to it. I can wonder about it, feel it, and let it pass. And then with that big loss last year and not feeling anything, and then the holidays came around, and I was like, oh, there it is. And I'm like preparing, you know, big dinners with like just oh, like tears. But it was all, it was good because I was finally feeling, like it felt more normal to do that. Um, and I was happy and I felt more whole because I was having those feelings. But sometimes it takes time and it's just what, I have so much gratitude for being able to notice those things. Um, so with that, Really beautiful reading. Take a minute, sit, ground, feel the gravity, pulling your grounded points towards the earth and the dynamic tension of pressing through your sit bones and the crown of your head pulling towards the ceiling with a long straight spine. On an inhale, draw your shoulders up towards your ears. Exhale, pull them down and back your spine. One more big breath in. Let it go. Thanks, my friend. So good to chat. Um, and I will be back tomorrow. And uh, look forward to talking to y'all soon.